let's do a quick farm review on cardiac glycosides. One medication included in this group is digoxin, and this medication can be used to treat heart failure, cardiogenic shock, atrial fibrillation, or atrial flutter. So how does this medication work? Well, there's three things I want you to remember because chances are you may see it on a farm exam again. The first thing is that it's going to have positive inotropic effect on the heart. When we're talking about inotropic, we're talking about the force of contraction. And because it's positive, it means that the heart's contractions are going to be stronger, which is something we definitely need if our patient has heart failure or cardiogenic shock because the heart, it's almost done. And if we can get it to pump better, that would be great. Another thing is that it's going to have a negative chronotropic effect. So when we're talking about chronotropic, we're talking about time, hence the rate. So because it's negative, it's going to have a slower rate. So the heart is going to be slower. Then thirdly, we're going to have a negative dromotropic effect. So when we're talking about dromotropic, we're talking about like how the electrical signal is running or the conduction. So it's negative. Therefore, we're going to have a slower impulse through the AV node. So we have a heart that's going to be stronger, it's going to be slower, and the impulse is going to be slower, which is great when you have AFib, A-flutter, or heart failure, or cardiogenic shock. Now for side effects that are associated with digoxin, I really want to concentrate on toxicity because digoxin has a very narrow therapeutic range of 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. Therefore, you wanna make sure you are aware of these signs and symptoms of toxicity. So early on, the patient can have nausea and vomiting. Then, as it keeps going on, they can have vision changes where they start to see yellowish green halos. And as we start getting late, the ECG will start to have dysrhythmia. So you'll notice ECG changes. So if your patient's on DIG and that stuff's happening, definitely want to get help. So there are some things that increase your patient's risk of developing digoxin toxicity. One thing are electrolyte imbalances. A big one is potassium. If that potassium drops too low, it can increase digoxin toxicity. Also, magne a low magnesium can do this and a high calcium. Plus, patients who are elderly are at risk for this or if they're taking calcium channel blockers. Now, other side effects that can happen with digoxin, of course, is bradycardia. That's why we always measure the heart rate before we give this medication and headache. So going over to nurse's role, big thing you wanna do is you wanna count that apical pulse before you administer every digoxin medication. So follow your hospital's guidelines, protocols on the ranges and when they want you to administer this. So this is just typically what it could be. Like for an adult, you don't wanna give it. You will hold the medication if the heart rate's less than 60, that apical pulse. The child less than 70 and an infant less than 90 to 100. Again, what was that therapeutic range? It was 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. And uh, you want to make sure your patient is consuming foods that are rich in potassium. If they're not supplementing, a lot of times patients are going to be on a supplementation of potassium while they're taking this. And monitor that potassium level when it's ordered and the ECG for any changes. And make sure that their electrolytes are within range. Okay, so that wraps up this video over cardiac medications. If you'd like to watch more videos in this pharmacology series, you can access the link below.